considering that most horror movies are entirely concerned with scaring the hell out of audiences, it is fair to say that it isn't a genre necessarily known for its subtlety or restraint. However, by shying away from the focal monster or refusing to revel in gore and violence, all of the following flicks mined a tremendous anxiety and suspense from the things that we actually didn't see. I'm Josh from What Culture Horror, and these are 10 horror movies that prove less is more. Number 10, The Blair Witch Project. When The Blair Witch Project hit cinemas back in 1999, it was like nothing else audiences had ever seen. Ditching the typicality of narrative filmmaking with its groundbreaking found footage style, this unconventional presentation style melded perfectly with a viral marketing campaign, which effectively sold the film as something more real than horror fans had ever seen before. But what really pushed the flick over the top was the subtle restraint and economic approach to scares. Rather than littering the screen with gore, ghouls, and tired jump scares, the viewer is actually left to fill in the blanks themselves. Through the sheer atmosphere of the woods and compellingly terrified performances of cast members Heather Donahue, Michael C. Williams, and Joshua Leonard, The Blair Witch Project proved itself an uncommonly tense horror despite never once showing the titular entity itself. Number 9. Gerald's Game Gerald's Game showed us that all you need for great horror is a dead body, a pair of handcuffs, and a creepy old geezer with a foot fetish. Essentially, it's one big chamber piece with married couple Jesse and Gerald embarking on a vacation to spark up their marriage a little bit. Big G's idea of this is to introduce a little bit of kink into the bedroom, handcuff his wife to the bedpost, and then have themselves a little bit of the lovemaking. Unfortunately for him though, as soon as he whacks the cuffs on, the dude has a heart attack and dies, leaving Jesse chained to the bed, unable to escape or even get help. So yeah, he had lofty, sexy ambitions, but he accidentally kinda just left her in a jigsaw trap. Things get a little bit weirder from here, and there are some flashbacks which add more depth to the characters, but for the most part, it's just one person in an impossible situation with only hallucinations to keep her company. Number 8. Paranormal Activity By 2009, a decade after the release of The Blair Witch Project, the found footage genre wasn't that unique anymore, and precious few entries had managed to do anything particularly innovative with a lo-fi format. Then, Paranormal Activity came along. Shot for just $15,000, the Haunted House film took a page out of the Blair Witch Project's book by letting the viewers imagine the demonic creature harassing protagonists Katie and Mika rather than showing it outright. With much of the supernatural action captured through still locked off cameras, audiences were invited to scan around the frame looking for something to happen. Whether it was a door to slam or a footprint to appear, for instance, effectively letting them do most of the work scaring themselves. By offering up a smart revision of the formula, admit to compelling central performances, Paranormal Activity temporarily breathed new life into a flagging subgenre, even if its sequels soon enough shed that initial luster. Number 7. Lake Mungo this low-budget Australian mockumentary follows a family as they attempt to come to terms with the death of their daughter, and the increasingly unsettling series of spooky happenings that follow. Lake Mungo's success lies primarily in how brilliantly it replicates the style and plausibility of a real documentary, such that even as it introduces increasingly surreal elements, they never feel too ridiculous. You know how sometimes it's late and you throw on one of those Netflix true crime documentaries that are just so plentiful these days, and they're actually kind of spookier than some horror films. Well, this tries to ape that same vibe. Or I guess they try to ape this vibe, you, you know what I mean. Between director Joel Anderson's unnerving filmmaking and the highly believable performances of the cast, it's easy to fall under the movie's spell such that when it finally lets loose with one unshakable image near the end of the movie, it proves all the more effective. Number 6. Alien. It is impossible to discuss a less is more filmmaking in the horror genre without foregrounding one of its pioneers, Ridley Scott's Alien. Though on paper its premise isn't really any different from a typical slasher film, Scott's understated approach focuses less on the man in the xenomorph suit than it does on the cavernous H.R. Geiger designed ship, and the anxious home of isolation as the Nostromo's numbers get whittled down. Its few brief bursts of violence aside, Alien is notable for barely giving the audience a full glimpse of the xenomorph at all intentionally cloaking it in shadow, keeping its complete profile hidden, and providing only fleeting flashes of its brutal bloodletting. Instead, Alien is far more concerned with stomach-knotting suspense and sheer atmosphere, in turn creating an unforgettable genre masterwork which has aged like a fine wine in the 40 plus years since. Unsurprisingly as well, not a single Alien sequel has managed to recapture that same sense of gut-wrenching anxiety. 
And quite sensibly, James Cameron's Aliens didn't even try, opting instead to fashion itself as a brilliantly exhausting full throttle bug hunt. Number 5. The Lodge This psychological horror film from the creators of Goodnight Mommy revolves around soon to be stepmother Grace, who becomes stranded at a lodge with her fiance's two children over Christmas. Now, The Lodge is absolutely a film best watched while knowing as little as possible about the story, so I would recommend not even watching the trailer. Just go in, have a good time, and then report back in the comments. If you want to know something, then know simply that it riffs on familiar horror movie themes, namely family isolation and paranoia, and remixes them in both clever and deeply unsettling ways. A few brief moments of visceral brutality notwithstanding, The Lodge is almost entirely cerebral in its horror, leaving the audience to meditate on the increasingly strange sights witnessed throughout. Rather than let the story devolve into played out supernatural guff, the directors are explicitly concerned with building a suffocating air of dread, and they do do it masterfully. Its bleak tone admittedly won't be for all tastes, but adventurous horror fans will absolutely love it. Number 4. The House of the Devil for my money, Ty West is one of the most underrated directors of the past couple decades, and partly why he's been overlooked so much could be because he excels in slow burn horror that leads a lot of viewers to complain that, quote unquote, nothing happens. However, from The Innkeepers to The Sacrament, he's contributed loads of scares to the genre, and The House of the Devil might just be his finest work. Authentically aping 70s horror aesthetics and tropes, focusing on a babysitter who's called to a mysterious house one night, outside of a few moments of old ultraviolence, it's a slow build to the outrageous climax. The rising tension pays off in spades though, and after a whole movie wondering what's going on with this house, identifying a bunch of red flags, and of course, rooting for our hero, it rewards the audience's patience by bringing everything crashing down. Number 3. The Killing of a Sacred Deer Yorgos Lanthimos is one of the most brilliantly singular filmmakers working today, blanketing each of his movie projects, including Dogtooth, The Lobster, and The Favourite, with a distinctly off kill to tone. And that's never been more true than in his psychological horror masterpiece, The Killing of a Sacred Deer, in which the family of a cardiac surgeon, Stephen, begins to fall ill, and he's told by a mysterious teenage acquaintance that the only way to save his family is by killing one of them. Lanthimos has a brilliant penchant for writing characters and directing actors to seem as detached from our own reality as possible, and here all the characters have a slightly off robotic feel to them, which creates an innately unsettling vibe from the outside. Set. The film as a whole is almost entirely bereft of gore and conventional scares, but does such a remarkable job mining suspense from Steven's dilemma that it's truly one of the most discomforting horrors of the last decade. Number 2. Creep Given the involvement of indie film legend Mark Duplass, you would be forgiven for assuming that Creep was just some sort of mumblecore comedy. But this collaboration with director co-star Patrick Bryce is instead one of the most evocative horrors of the decade. A filmmaker who accepts a job to record an eccentric client, Joseph, whose increasingly uneasy behaviours may or may not indicate a darker motivation. The brilliance of this lo-fi found footage film is that until the very end, it holds audiences in gut-wrenching suspense over the true nature of Duplass's character. Without any supernatural hooey in sight, the horror comes entirely from the actor's extremely off-putting performance as Joseph, a man who could easily be a weirdo prankster or a legitimate psychopath and no, no spoilers here, it could go either way. The bulk of the film doesn't amount to much more than two actors hanging out in a house, but because Bryce and Duplass invest us so thoroughly in the setup, it remains stomach knottingly suspenseful all the way through. Despite the clear limitations of the premise, Creep 2 was also a fantastic follow up, and Creep 3 is currently in the works. Number 1. The Invisible Man And finally, we have The Invisible Man. Though originally intended as a star vehicle for Johnny Depp as part of Universal's planned but failed Dark Universe, RIP in peace, it was ultimately retooled into a low budget genre film written and directed by Lee Winnell. With a mere $7 million budget, surely a fraction of what Depp himself would have cost alone, Winnell opted to pare the splashy visual effects showpieces down and focus instead on the fear that comes with facing an invisible enemy who could literally be anywhere. This is sold to the audience sublimely through Elizabeth Moss's exceptional performance and Winnell's assured minimalist direction, often lingering on unoccupied spaces of the frame where the antagonist might be lingering. In addition to this, Winnell's social commentary regarding society's disturbing distrust of abused women couldn't feel more timely. And despite the low price tag, Winnell still manages to serve up a few fleeting bursts of elevated action. While it can never compete with the scale and effects heavy mayhem the Depp movie would have given us, Winnell's version is a pitch perfect example of a talented filmmaker using limited resources to their absolute advantage. 